start with the new syllabus advanced web designing we all should be well aware about what are the basic tags in web designing meta tag is a tag in html that describes some aspects of contents of a web page the html meta tag is used by search engines to search information that is provided with the web page this is empty tag that means it is a singular tag it do not have a closing tag which carries information within its attributes the meta tag is placed between the head tag that means opening and closing head tag meta tag will not be displayed on the web page overall students meta tag do not have any of its output onto the browser window it they do not show any output on the screen like body tag like h1 tag like form tag it shows you some output onto the browser window similarly a meta tag do not show any output meta tag is only for an administrative purpose a owner of the web site he wants some description about his web page about his website and the description about the website can be done with the help of meta tag and meta tag is to be placed in a head tag obviously whatever we write in a head tag is not displayed as an output it is just a description you see over here meta tag is used by search engines means it is helpful for search engines to search your website when somebody googles ki xyz.com so that xyz.com should be searched across all the domains available in www if you want your website to be, website to be searched through a particular keyword like say what is keyword like say for example uh, if your website is about a school then what will be the keywords keywords will be something like fees keyword will be something like admission keyword will be something like classes keyword will be sub something like subjects and etc so those keywords we keep it in a meta tag so that if somebody uh, searches through a google search or any other search on www your website will be searched for them okay that is why we use meta tag meta tag is used by search engines to search information that is provided with the web page now where the information is provided information is provided with the help of meta tag now let us understand the different attributes of meta tag name name is an first attribute the value we give to a name is the value of the name attribute can be related to any of the following author description keyword copyright you see an example meta name equals author that means who has created this website you if you want to search your website on any of the search engines through an author name that means one who created the website then you write as meta name equals author or any of the description if your uh, website is abccollege.com okay or abc college or xyz college or ues college then that ues can be written as a description so if anybody onto a search engine types ues then this website will be searched okay keywords any keywords as i explained you keywords can be classes subjects admission date uh, uh, fees etc if your website is related to college if your website is related to the any of the restaurant then menu uh, price uh, location address name of the restaurant all these can be keywords to that particular website okay description specifies now what is a description specifies the name of a meta data like author keyword and description that is with the help of which what you want to search your website with then another attribute is content the value we give to a content is 
any textual matter related to the name of your website okay example you see uh, content equals bal bharti okay content equals advanced web designing content equals html5 learn html5 list in html5 okay so this can be the content so that if anybody in google search uh, types bal bharti or advanced web designing or html5 then your website will be into that search list okay what uh, value we write we write the value what you want to search you read the description what is a description to an value the content of an author value for a content attribute specifies name of the topic any name of the topic any keyword which you want to search in a google search engine or any other search engine so that if that keyword is typed into a search engine or in the list of the websites what google will search or search engine will search your website will also be into the list okay you want to see an example i click over here so that you see an output as i said actually no output will be displayed you see no output is displayed there is nothing to be shown okay i will show you the code you see the code all of you are you able to see the code you see i have written meta name equal description content something meta name equal keyword content something so this content if anybody types into google search then this will be displayed then uh, in a search engine in a search engine will list the website into the searches what it will search okay now attribute of meta tag another attribute char set okay what is an char set char set is an character encoding used by this document your website is using what type of character code there are lot many character codes okay here i only specify two because your book has uh, uh, these two uh, character codes otherwise when you search onto a google there are many character codes we, uh, which can be given as a value to char set okay for different Uh, countries for so there are different character codes like UTF-8. UTF-8 is what Unicode. It is an Unicode which includes Indian characters as well. Indian characters means all uh, the languages what we use in India. Okay, can be used or can be seen onto the web browser. so when i i say ki i am using utf that is utf is universal utf is universal character encoding for unicode that uh, is universal and it also includes indian characters big five specifically for chinese and japanese characters big five so when you write meta ca, meta char set equals utf dash 8 means you are using the universal character code utf 8 okay you want to see this is how the output will be okay actually no output will be seen uh, because it is into the head tag okay one thing see note i have written india is an institutional member of unicode consortium a uh, unicode consortium members there is an organization called unicode consortia member and india is an institutional member of it this is an additional knowledge i am giving to you apart from the textbook and because of this our indian languages are included are included into the 
uh, Unicode and we can see all those languages. We, we can see Marathi uh, website, we can see Engl uh, uh, different uh, languages, Indian languages website also. All those characters can be displayed onto the web browser. Why? Because Indian languages are the part of Unicode. Okay, and why they are part of Unicode? Because India has become an institutional member of Unicode Consortium. Okay, what code I have written for this? I have written something like this. Meta care set equals UTF-8. And if I type anything in, in Unicode, uh, Unicode language Marathi, then that will also be seen into a body. Other attribute HTTP dash EQ, EQUIV, equivalent as we say. Okay, value to this attribute is refresh, set cookie, content type, expires. Okay, let us see an example. See, as meta HTTP equivalent equals refresh, content equals 5. That means the website should be refreshed after every five seconds. HTTP equals set cookies. Okay, cookies is a big topic which we'll understand at the end of this chapter. Cookies is something which is stored by the web server on the client computer. So if you want your web server to store the information, some information onto the client computer, then we say as in set cookies. Okay, then care set big. Okay, content type is HT, uh, text HTML. You see, HTTP equivalent equals a content dash type. And what is a content with text HTML? It, it is an HTML document. The meaning of this is it, uh, whatever I will be writing further will be uh, it's, uh, text slash HTML then expires when does session when you open a we website when you open yahoo.com that means what yahoo session starts when you start abc.com what means that particular website's session starts on your computer and if anybody leaves it unattended then till what time that session should be active that session will be active till the time and date what you specify. You see, expires equals, you, see, you write some date and time. So on that date and time, this website will be deactivated on that client computer. Deactivated in a sense, that session will be deactivated. That means when I open yahoo.com and if I leave it unattended, just like this, I close the web browser, but actually the website was not closed Okay, many times we log in onto different websites. When we log in onto the different websites and we just close the browser, what happens is our login is active. We, we have just closed the web browser. Then till when that login should be active, that you can specify ki my website should be a session, my website session should be active or up to so and so date, up to so and so time. That you can specify with the help of expire. Okay, let us see an output. Okay, use of HTTP equivalent attribute in meta tags. There's no output, but I can show you the code what I have written for this. You, you see the code is something like this. Okay. Well, no output. It, uh, it because it is written into an head tag. It is an, it written in head tag. Meta tag actually do not show any of the output onto the web browser. It is just for an additional information for website administrator. Website administrator and not for the website user.
see an example of meta tag this is how all different meta tags come together meta name authors content balwati the name description name keyword and some content okay which actually do not show any of the output onto the web browser now let us go on to the cascading style sheet that's all about meta tag it is for an website administrator and not for a website user hence you don't see any of the output of the meta tag now very important topic cascading style sheet very 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 important topic it is said to be a dynamic html dynamic means keeps on changing keeps on changing what you cannot do with normal html can be done with css css stands for cascading style sheets it describes how html elements are to be displayed on screen or on to the other media okay wherever you show an html document over there how html elements are to be displayed normal html is said to be a static html whereas css is said to be a dynamic html you can say it as a dhtml also okay css saves a lot of work because you you are you will be describing your own uh, selectors you will you, you will be describing your own selectors in form of html elements i'll show you practically you will enjoy uh, uh, writing the code in css it can control the layout of multiple web pages that means you define ones and that definition can be displayed into multiple web pages the definition can be displayed onto multiple web pages css allows you to control the look and feel of several pages by changing a single source one definition you change and the entire look of a website onto different web pages can be changed for example if you want to display something in h1 okay large font then h1 you have to write it on to all the web pages if you have five web pages into your website and you want some heading to be displayed okay into a common format then on using normal html you have to define it five times but using css you define it once and all the web pages you will be able to see that particular format that is the advantage of css cascading style sheet how do we write css okay a css syntax let us see a css rule set contains what a selector a declaration block css rule contains what selector and a declaration block what is selector any tag you see this h1 you see same color purple color h1 is an selector over here okay declaration block again consists of property and value separated with a colon there is a property there is a value and property and value is separated with colon in a declaration block there can be more than one property there can be more than one property there can be two properties three properties four properties all the properties should be differentiated or between the two properties there should be semicolon there should be semicolon okay declaration block should be written into curly brackets this is a rule how css is to be written okay all of you note down okay how is a rule for writing the css css rule contains a selector a declaration block selector is any of your html element or any of your html tag declaration block includes property and value between the property and value there should be semicolon and between two property values there should be semicolon between property and value there should be colon and between two properties there should be semicolon so this 
is a rule what you need to understand how is to be written okay now what is a selector selector indicates the html element you want to style okay, which html element you want to give a style See, cascading style sheet it's a style sheet you give some particular style already html element may have some style you are overcoming you are writing your own style you are defining your own style so which html element you want to give your own style that we that is a selector in css selector indicates the html element you want to style it could be any tag like h1 body etc any any html element any html tag can be a selector you can define any html tag on your own using css for example if h1 is having its own style which displays the text into the largest possible size you can change that style you can change that size key if anybody writes h1 it should be displayed into smallest possible size so you can define you are to uh, css is used to define the selector what is declaration block what is declaration block again declaration block very important because declaration block itself is a definition of that html element the declaration block contains one or more declaration separated by semicolon you as i said if there are more than one properties those two properties should be separated with a semicolon okay for the above example uh, there are two declaration that is in this example there are two de uh, definitions or two declaration color and font size color is a property font size is a property value to color is an yellow value to font size is 11 px between the two properties as a semicolon and between a value and a property there is a semicolon color yellow font size 11 px there are two declarations each declaration contains a property name color is a property name and a value yellow is a value separated by colon there is a colon between this and between this property and we and this property there is a semicolon this you need to know okay small mistake not right entire thing is right in exams i notice the entire code is right entire declaration is right but colon is missing because of one colon you are not getting the output okay i am talking about board practical examination point of view in board practicals examination you write the i have seen student writing entire code properly but because of a semicolon placed wrongly or typed wrongly they uh, they do not get the output and when you do not get the output you get panic and uh, you lose your marks and hence it is very important to write properly okay what is a property and what is an value a property is a type of an attribute of html element okay it should be color border etc what we uh, know as an attribute to a tag is an property to a selector i repeat what we say attribute to a tag attribute to a tag is a property to a selector property to a selector when i say mouse is an selector okay color of a mouse length of a mouse width of the mouse what are the different buttons on to the mouse are the properties when i say chair when i say chair is a selector color of a chair a height of a chair type of a chair is a property okay so all the html tags all the html tags are ha having the attributes similarly you there are many properties which you can assign 
to any of the HTML element, okay, which is said to be a selector. Then value, we have to assign a value to a property. Values are assigned to CSS properties. Okay, we give some value. All the property we are, will be understanding or we will be learning many properties. Okay, like attributes are only for a particular tag. Okay, that is not the case of the properties. Properties can be for any HTML tag. Like, for example, BG color is an attribute only of body tag and not of H1 tag. When we say BG color, BG color we have learned as an attribute. Attribute of whose? Attribute of body tag and not of H1 tag. Right? Similarly, when we learn properties, these properties can be used for any HTML elements or any HTML tags, which are called selectors now. Here, we call those tags or HTML elements as selectors. There are three types of CSS. Types of CSS, three methods of implementing the styling information to HTML document. We can give style in the three different ways. There's an inline styling, the inline CSS, we have embedded CSS and external CSS. Inline CSS, embedded CSS, and inline CSS. Okay, internal CSS or embedded CSS, inline CSS, external CSS. Let us understand these one by one. Inline CSS, it is used as a style attribute within an tag in an HTML start tag. Whichever is HTML start tag, over there we implement this style attribute. Okay, this is said to be an inline CSS. When you implement a style within an HTML tag, it is said to be an inline CSS. Inline CSS is used to apply CSS on a single line or an element, a single line in a single line or a single element. For example, H2, style equals color, colon, blue. See, style equals color, colon, blue. Now, here, this style is what? This style is said to be an attribute of H2 tag. Style is an universal attribute. Yes, in my previous lecture, I told you what is universal attribute. Universal attribute means can be applied to any HTML tag, any HTML element. Here, H2 style equals color colon blue. This is a property colon blue is a value. Make a note value over here to a property. Okay, that means property as well as value is enclosed into double quote. As if this entire thing, as if this is, this entire thing is a value to a style attribute. Okay, H2 style equals in double quotes property colon value. If you want to write another property, I write semicolon and then I write another property value. Okay, the meaning of this will be this hello CSS will come into blue color. Okay, normal use of H2 was to be shown into a second highest uh, size. But now, along with this style, second highest size, it will also display it into the blue. Let us see the output. You see, this part I have written into CSS. I'll show you the code for this. H2 style equals color colon blue. I close H2 over here and within H2 I have written this. So this will be displayed into H2 size along with blue color. Make a note all of you how I have written a code this is an example of inline CSS. All of you, 
make a note of this there will be many examples many questions on css from exam point of view css carries maximum mark next let us understand internal css inline internal and external internal is also said to be embedded internal is also said to be embedded this is used to apply css on a single document or a page inline on a single tag internal to a single document make a note inline to a single tag and internal to a single document and external to a multiple document okay keep this structure in mind this statement in mind inline to a single html element internal to a single html document and external to multiple html documents let us understand now internal css this is used to apply css on a single document or a page it can affect all the elements of the page it affects what if it affects all the elements on the page okay many multiple elements what how if there are five h1s or five h2s all five h2s will be affected it is written inside the style tag within a head section of an html what it is there is a we, we should have a style tag which is defined in head section of html okay very important here you are learning style tag see an example over here internal style sheet there is a style tag within head there is a head and in head you have a style tag you have a title tag as well as style tag and in style tag i have written h1 color colon red semicolon then body h1 the internal uh, h1 and p so wherever h1 occurs in the body section all that will have red color the meaning of this how do we write internal css style h1 color colon red semicolon style i'll show you an output the output goes something like this i'll show you the code you see over here in head i have title tag i have a style tag in style tag i have defined what i have defined h2 my selector is h2 and definition or declaration is color colon red okay red is an value color is an property h2 is an selector so wherever in my body section whenever i use h2 the, for all those h2s i'll get color to be red now this will be in a red color normally h2 do not show it into any color it shows you in a uh, web browser's default color that's black okay you are changing the color of a display so h2 is a definition or declaration in style tag which is written again in head tag and in body wherever h2 occurs will have that style make a note all of you previously it was inline now it is internal make a note of this all of you the external style sheet is generally used when you want to make changes on multiple pages on multiple web pages if you want same style to be applied then we make use of external css we make use of external css it facilitates to change the look of entire website by changing just one file just one file you make a change 
and the entire look of a website will be changing it uses what it uses a link tag internal use style tag external css use link tag link tag is also to be placed in head section it uses the style attribute in html start tag let us see an example for it you see in head tag there's an link tag and here i write how do i write link tag make a note all of you link rel equal style sheet rel stands for relation the relation of this file in href i have to write an external css file name okay the relation of this external css file name is style sheet type equal text slash css it is a text file and into it there is an css so link tag you have to write as it is link rel equal style sheet type equal text slash slash css href equals style dot css this is an external css file style dot css this is the entire is html and a separate css file a separate notepad you have to create in that you have to write the declaration and should be saved as dot css any name dot css whatever name you give you have to write over here so the whichever file whichever html document you include this style dot css all those html document will have this style if i have a dot html i have b dot html i have c dot html in a and b if i write this statement link then in those a and b html document i will have this style and what is in external style sheet external style sheet can be written in any text editor and must be saved with dot css extension a separate file normal html file we give extension as htm or html here external css you have to write again into another notepad another text editor you just have to write selector and declaration block no other tag will come only selector and declaration block and that file should be saved as dot css the external css file should not contain any html tag okay i'll show you the output output will be something like this show you the code you see this name of my file is this something something called this external css file but in head in head you have to write link tag so in link tag i have specified href i have given a link to a external css file and this external css file has the definition or declaration on h2 and h2 will be displayed in something like this into green color that that is my definition in that css something like this a separate separate css file you see this separate css file to be written over here in a link tag okay output of this code will be something like this okay color equal navy margin left 20 px so this will be into a navy a blue color and a 20 pixel different properties and met uh, values i'll be explaining you 
but right now we are only understanding what is in line internal and external properties we will understand later okay further we have all the properties okay have you understood that three style sheets inline css internal css and external css in inline to be given to a particular tag internal to be specified within style tag in head tag and external a separate css file is to be created and that separate css file should be linked using link tag and now what are the different properties and what are the different values we'll be understanding it in our next session thank you for today have a nice day if you like this video please subscribe to this youtube channel and after subscribing you also click on to and bell icon so that you get the notification of newly uploaded video onto this youtube channel thank you have a nice day